Hi, you're on Bespoke Unit, I'm CP, and in this video I'm going to be reviewing side by side the Monte Cristo White Series and the Monte Cristo White Series Vintage Connecticut. This has been a particularly interesting exercise because usually when we're comparing cigars, we'll probably review them back to back rather than side by side, meaning that we smoke one, take our notes, wait for our palates to calm down and then smoke another. But given that these are quite mild cigars, the uh, White Series, and they're quite inoffensive, I thought I'd try them side by side and see what it would reveal during the uh, review process. As always, we've been using the Bespoke Unit Cigar Formula. As you can see, I have two copies. I have the White Series and the White Series Vintage underneath. Uh, which is a quantifiable review matrix. You can download a blank copy in the description below. You can also refer to these original PDFs so you can see the scores and compare them as I talk. Additionally, as a control step in our testing, they have been stored in the same conditions in this Bovedo Create Humidor, which you can see behind me. They have been together there for three weeks. I kept them apart so they, their flavors didn't marry, although they were both cellared. And for three weeks, that probably wasn't long enough. I also use 69% Boveda packs and I monitored it regularly using a Boveda butler. The White Series, the original one I've had for a couple of years, so it probably has aged a little, but I wouldn't say significantly. Meanwhile, the vintage I received recently through Paul, Bespoke Unit's founder, who uh, wanted me to review these and I thought, why the hell not? Let's review them together. Interestingly, the White Series was introduced by the Altadis owned Monte Cristo brand as a complement to its Cuban counterparts. They are both produced in the Dominican Republic at the Tabacleara de Garcia, and of course they're both handmade cigars. The key difference between these cigars is their wrapper. The wrapper on the uh, original one is an Ecuadorian Connecticut, which means it was grown under natural cloud cover, whereas the vintage is using only 2008 USA Connecticut, which means it was grown under these cloth-like uh, covers. Otherwise, they both feature a Nicaraguan binder. They both have Dominican Republic and Nicaraguan binder. Unfortunately, I don't have much more information than that. And another additional leaf in the vintage is a Peruvian filler as well, which of course, I don't have any more details on that, but it should provide an overall different flavor profile. Otherwise, in terms of format and Vitola, uh, I tried to choose the most similar ones I could find. So here I have a Toro for the original White Series, which is a 6x54. Meanwhile, the vintage, as you can see, is slightly similar, is a double Corona uh, 6.25x50. In terms of body, they're relatively mild, although, as you'll see in this review, the vintage is slightly fuller in body. We'll dive straight into the look and feel. Uh, in terms of construction, very, very similar. The uh, overall construction is quite even. Couple of bumps here and there, but nothing uh, too bad. The spring, when you squeeze them, is also uh, quite pleasant, nice firmness to them. As the most interesting key difference that you will notice is that the vintage is much paler than the original White Series, which is slightly darker in hue. Here we have on the vintage a more cafe au lait appearance, Whereas the White Series, the original, is going to be close to kind of a praline colour. Both feature a nice oily sheen. The veins aren't too prevalent, although there are a couple, and the aromas are pleasant. For the original White Series, I had haylage, so like hay, but it's been stored, it's grass that has been cured, raisins and nutmeg. Whereas the vintage gave a more spicier flavour of anise, birch and cinnamon. In terms of pre-light, both had a very pleasant draw, nice resistance there. The flavours were both quite rich and in terms of aromas, now what was quite interesting here was that the original White Series gave dried apricot, vanilla and hazelnuts. It was very, very sweet, quite mellow. Meanwhile, the vintage was tonka bean, cocoa and nutmeg. So it's much more on the spiciness as well as this succulent, tantalizing, gourmand flavors that you will soon learn about. Next up, we're gonna jump straight into the flavor profile and palette. 
I'm going to do them side by side, so I hope you're able to keep up. With the original white series in the first third, I experienced latte, coffee, cashew nut and vanilla. Meanwhile, the vintage was a same latte, coffee nut. I had hazelnut, so not like the cashew nut, it was a little bit tougher, a little bit sharper, and instead of vanilla, we had leather. So it had a much more robust flavor profile in the first, in the first third. Meanwhile, in the second third, on the original, there was butterscotch, white pepper, and roasted thyme. This was quite sweet, quite mild, aromatic, and creamy. Meanwhile, the vintage, I experienced malt, white pepper, and roasted, step, roasted sage. So in both cases, I had white pepper, but here I had a more sage aromatic note that felt char-grilled and roasted, as well as malt. So we still had a little bit of creamier, creaminess, but it was more cereal than dairy cream. It was the final third where the two cigars really started to diverge even more than before. And as it is, although they have similar flavor profiles, there is a distinctive difference between the two. In the original Y series, I had molasses, ginger, and oak. So there was this kind of sugary, sweet, honey essence there, but it was quite tangy, a little bit zesty, and there was a distinctive woodiness that provided some substance. As for the Vintage White series, I experienced white pepper, which continued from the second third, dried earth and Brazil nut. So we still had some nuttiness here, dried earth, this kind of musty flavor, which you could probably compare to a Cuban cigar, but it's definitely not like a Cuban cigar, and none of this sweetness that you experienced in the original. In terms of palette, so I'm gonna fold it like this so I can easily compare the two. The complexity was quite similar. They were both relatively intricate. The mouthfeel was much smoother, I found, on the white series. Uh, and the uh, vintage was a little bit drier, a little bit sour on the palate, whereas the original was more balanced. Meanwhile, the palate stimulation itself was overall more balanced on the vintage than it was on the original white series. I found the vintage to have a much fuller flavor profile that covered all of the tongue. And this was specifically in the second third. Until then, they were both a bit uneven, but the uh, vintage really caught up. In terms of life cycle, I found that the vintage was far more developed than the original. The original tended to be not linear, but it kind of carried on on the same story and the same themes, whereas the vintage had a little bit more personality to it. Finally, the finish of the two cigars, the finish on the vintage is much more lingering, lasts longer, whereas the original, it doesn't tend to stay on the tongue quite as long. As for the burn, both had very pleasant combustion. The draw was quite similar, nice resistance, but not too much. Both were cool smokes. Despite the, despite the vintage being a slightly thinner ring gauge. In terms of burn angle, they were a little bit wavy. I found the vintage corrected itself far more than the white series, but they tended to uh, compensate in the second third together. As for the backbone, which is the resistance of the ash uh, holding on to the end of the cigar, the original stayed on for far longer than the vintage. The vintage, I found it to be a little bit flaky this could be due to the uh, difference in ring gauge, but in general, I found that the white series, the original, lasted longer and I could get some decent stacks on that. And finally, we're gonna be talking about the overall experience, which talks about the presentation, the imagery, and the value for money, as well as the occasion. This is, some, this is the last scored element in this review. Uh, both of them have very distinctive bands, very similar, almost identical, the main band, which both says Monte Cristo White Series. The original White Series is, can differentiate itself because it has a second White Series band. Meanwhile, the Vintage has a long band which shows you a farm, I imagine some sort of picture from Connecticut. Uh, you can't see it right now because I've uh, smoked too much, but you'll see it in the written review in the description below. In terms of box, the uh, original White Series box has this kind of Cuban vibe where it's uh, a wooden box that has been covered in stickers. Uh, it doesn't look quite as premium. Meanwhile, the Vintage has a very lavish wooden box with a cedar uh, insert inside with a nice lacquer finish. In terms of value, both are very similarly priced. I was quite surprised. The White Series as a Toro will usually be found for about $12 a single, 
Meanwhile, the White Series Vintage comes at about $14 for a single and uh, the two difference in uh, $2 difference in price is actually quite surprising. And in terms of occasion, you can use these both for very similar uses. Their flavor profiles are overall quite similar, so the situation you find yourself in, it depends on your mood. If you want to something, if you want something a little bit more special, perhaps go for the vintage. If you want a more easy going smoke, maybe your best bet would be the original white series. And finally, we're going to briefly touch on food pairings. This is not scored, but we do feature it in the review sheet at the bottom right hand corner for your reference. Uh, although these cigars have very similar flavor profiles overall, I would choose a couple of different pairings. For example, for the original, I was leaning towards fudge because of the caramelized and vanilla notes, as well as candied fruit, certainly given the molasses and ginger in the final third, and milk chocolate. Meanwhile, the vintage would probably pair better with nuts, and I also suggested french fries, and you'll see why in a second, but french fries would be a nice savory option, and again, milk chocolate. As for beverages, the original, I would suggest probably a Campbelltown Scotch, because it's nice and floral, something quite pleasant on the palate, which would go well with this cigar, or a Riesling white wine, which is kind of fruit forward and has a nice pleasant bouquet, it would complement the White Series flavors, or otherwise a latte coffee. Meanwhile, the uh, White Series Vintage, I'd suggest a mild dark rum, when I say mild, probably something a little bit more natural and less flavored. So for example, a Florida Kenya 18 would be an excellent choice. Otherwise, I suggested champagne, which is why I mentioned French fries. French fries and champagne sounds nuts, but it's a wonderful pairing. With this cigar, you'd have a triple threat. They would go wonderfully together. And of course, latte coffee, as I suggested for the original. Otherwise, another drink that you could have with both would be uh, root beer. Root beer is a great soda because it has a very uh, aromatic and uh, vanilla-y flavor that would complement the uh, aromas of these two cigars. In my case, I've been drinking water because I've been comparing the two cigars, so I've been needing to clean my palate. I've not had anything to drink with them myself, but if it was in my own time for my own entertainment and leisure, I would choose something from that selection that I just said. In conclusion, these are overall two very similar cigars and they've both been rated five stars using the cigar formula from Bespoke Unit. Uh, the original was marked a little bit less with 81 out of 100. Meanwhile, the vintage has an 83 score out of 100. What would be interesting to note is that although those sound like low scores compared to most publications, we use a full 100 scale score system. So anything from 81 to 100 is five stars. Meanwhile, anything from 61 to 80 is four stars. Although these are overall similar cigars, they do have some very distinctive differences in terms of aroma and notes. I found that the uh, original White Series was much more uh, mellow. It was milder, it was smoother, and it was sweeter. Meanwhile, the vintage has much more personality. I found it to be a little bit maybe rough around the edges at first, but then it really revealed some beautiful hidden notes in its bouquet that complemented nicely and accorded throughout the whole experience. If you have a preference for milder cigars, probably go for the original White Series. Nevertheless, the vintage is not much stronger in body, so they are still similar cigars overall, it probably depends on your own personal preferences according to the notes that I described earlier. That's all from me today. I hope you've enjoyed this video. It was certainly an interesting experiment and at times a little bit challenging, but I had a great time comparing these two wonderful cigars and I look forward to doing more in the future. For more like this cigar content and general men's lifestyle, head to bespokeunit.com or subscribe to this channel, switch on that little bell and you'll hear from us again very soon. Take care.